And how do each other show up when that happens for us? Do or do they? How do what, the other uh, characters show up? Uh, well, that has a lot to do with what you choose to do. Um, okay. the The course of play itself has a little bit to do with a few other things. The magic in the game uh, has to do with ancient items, whether books or statues or just a region of the city or uh, an item like an ancient staff or something like that um, and a legendary item of some kind um, and your ability to wield these things and to make use of them is the magic um, so uh, so you're using this very ancient and very powerful and actually very amoral force it's like the, the this incredibly uh, potent but absolutely inhuman force of identity of the city as embodied in these objects and things like that uh, in order to as, as a source of power um, and what that does to you well we'll deal with that in a moment but you guys see the idea <laughs> is that you are these normal people who have had this vision and the question is, you're personally motivated to stop the adversary thing because of its threat to the thing you love, but it's also a long-term really good idea to stop it too, or to <laughs> stop the process to which it belongs. Because you see, when I roll for the vision, like I roll for the venture in Circle of Hands and get all these components, when I do that for the vision, the red die sets the Armageddon clock. Okay. And so, and that never changes when the, at least I don't think it does, when the next vision comes along, it's going to add to the Armageddon clock. So, um, so you know, I mean, the, this particular adversary is just the first wave. Um, uh, how if about you, like, I'm sorry, go uh, ahead. How about like, like the first, first die you roll uh, may, maybe you, you can add a value to it and it, give, it it will give you the total number of game pet sessions that, that you're going to play, that you have to play. Right, something uh, like that, yeah. Um, and, you, yeah. and you don't have to roll any other additional red, red die to it. Maybe, we will see. I mean, I want it to be a piece of the, the, the system we'll use that same role for each vision, but uh, but something of the kind. Okay. It might be more dynamic, too. Maybe you can make the clock go down. Maybe that's what you're trying yeah, sure. to do. I don't know at this point. But let's take a look at some characters, then. Right. So, everybody, get three dice and pretend that they're black, white, and red. <laughs> Guess what? Oh, uh, oh look at that. Yeah. Oh, no, I was... The, the guys who just... Look at that. Oh, you are sad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the guy who... Uh, the people who just played Circle of Hands and have the on-running game, uh, they yeah. were all apologizing when they were making up their characters. They were, they were rolling all <laughs> kinds of crazy colors. And they're like, I'm sorry. I'll go buy some real dice for this later. <laughs> this is really I'm shitty. I'm, I'm playing Circle of Hands with pink dice. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, look at that. black, white, and red, so I'm going to open them up. Oh, you're all oh, right. <laughs> Sacrificing your over the edge. You're breaking the seal. Talk Brand about your new. artifacts. <laughs> I'm I'm faking it. Yeah, that's all right. yeah, yeah. It's good. There you go, pink and green. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. I have another question. Uh, yeah. Does this thing will be a part of Circle of Hands, or is going to be something completely different? A little bit. Well, first of all, I have no plans. Okay. <laughs> in in a in a perfect world, I would love. In a perfect world. This is one of the hardbacks from the uh, from the Kickstarter. You yes. can only only get it from the Kickstarter. Except I might send you one, Ibars. I have a couple copies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but see, right? Um, and so uh, I would love to have, you know, a companion volume next to it yep. in the right, mm -hmm. you know, in the right format. Just I've do also, another Kickstarter run. <laughs> Your favorite thing. You, you can hear me scream without the phone and the screen at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
you guys should know that long ago I also built the sequel game to Circle of Hands a generation later. Oh. Huh. Okay. So I do have extensive notes for Circle of Hands Part 2. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, to answer the question, this is definitely in the same world. Okay. okay. It is far, far away. Hmm. Okay. Um, right. And if there's trade contact, it is the kind where an observer could see that there's contact, but the people involved in their two separate locations do not have a sense of direct interaction. It would be a lot like... Uh, uh, It would be a lot like, for example, the the Chinese Empire yep. and the Italian Renaissance. Mm, There's right. a lot of contact, I mean, probably even less than that. Perhaps like the one of the African, the Southern African kingdoms. Okay. You know, a, a scholar or an anthropologist or a historian could easily see the trade goods going back and forth. They could easily see that there are there's cultural interchange, but there's so many membranes in between them as far as people are concerned that the people on either end don't really see it. Okay. Um, so the uh, the the other, I think, kind of important part is that from a reader's standpoint, you will see that the religion in Circle of Hands and the religion the primary religion of the city, are the same. Hmm. But a person who actually practiced one or the other would be baffled by you saying that. You know, we're nothing like that. What are you talking about? They get it all wrong. <laughs> um, so, um, the, so there is, the, there are those connections. They're sort of, but they're very much for the reader to enjoy, not for the characters to experience. Okay. Um, the, uh, the geography is not the, the, you know, the greater Syria, the, mm -hmm. the geography is actually completely ripped off from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned it in the Patreon. Uh, the geography is that of the, of Central America. So mm -hmm. between the Pacific and the Atlantic. So you have two oceans and you have a strip of land with a whole bunch of different kingdoms and then there's one city which is more ancient than the others that all the kingdoms think is important um, so think of it as or the so this has nothing to do with the culture but I, I'm basing it on the uh, early Aztec when the the old Mayans are still you know a culture um, so uh, anyway, but that's but you're in the holy city and you're far away from there's there's always a war somewhere, and every so often, like every hundred years or so, you know, an army marches in and moves in and guards the city. Now, of course, they had to kill the old army to do it, <laughs> but they live in the same they live in the same place where the old army lived, right. And, you know, so the taxes are being, are coming from a different, you know, there's a different capital that the taxes are being processed through, but who the fuck cares? So The city we, does not care. The city doesn't care, and the cultures are all still the same anyway. It's just a shift in administration as far as the city is concerned. All right. Um, so, um, here we have, uh, here, here we, we're, we're going to try it. We'll see. So we got our dice. And I'll do it too. So we roll and we do black, white, and red. So write down your numbers. And then add one to each one. And those are going to be your brawn, your quickness, and your wits. Uh, in... Black is brawn. White okay. is quickness. Red okay. is wits. 
Okay. No. So add one to each one. Don't forget that part. And okay. then pretend you rolled a five for your charm, so your charm is six. Starting charm. Okay. I should point out that this charm it works great on foreigners. Against mm-hmm. other denizens of the city, you only get one die. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Right. I like that. Okay, so you can see the chat window. Um, and so you would pick two traits, like you do in Circle of Hands, and I should clarify, they, they should be pretty clear. Um, I can explain the justification a little bit, that this is an active culture, so being wealthy doesn't mean you have no leisure, but it means that you have the best care and the best resources and the best food, so you are basically healthier. So okay. if you're wealthy, you have more brawn. Huh. And we're just picking two. Right. Right. Um, you know, if you have a really low roll on something, you can try and you can get it plus three and give it a respectable score, for example. Um, or you can max out your highest, or you can try and even out things, whatever. Um, I don't think you've made Circle of Hands characters before, Rod. Is that correct? I've Maybe made before. one a long, a long time ago. When I first bought the game, I right. tried it out, but, but I have uh, not. So the, the degree of freedom is fun, but then it, then all of a sudden it makes a lot of sense once you do it. You're like, oh, I get it. Right. So right. Um, a doctrinal character is somebody who does turn to religious language to solve problems. But I should point out it's more of a legalistic way of thinking rather than a philosophical one. Um, they they care a lot more about what everybody has said for the last thousand years than they do about what the book says. Right. As far as idealism is concerned, that's really wide open. But the character wants the world to change in a way that helps people. It's an altruistic kind of idealism. They want they want to change the world or see it changed in a way that's better for others. Okay. Now, exactly what that is, that kind of depends. If you're idealistic and ruthless, it's quite different from being idealistic and, you know, wealthy. Um, So, uh, once you have those, then you can change your scores. I think I'm going to be educated and doctrinal, so my character is kind of a pain in the ass that way. (laughs) Always. What are we looking at? Gordon, what do we have? I think I'm going to be idealistic and educated. Mm-hmm. And um, that'll put you at what numbers? And I rolled fairly well. That ends up with wit 7, quickness 7, brawn 5, and of course the normal charm 6. Okay. Uh, so, and what about you, Ibars? Uh, it's the same as you, man. It's uh, idealism and e- education. Okay. But my scores are brawn 5. Mm-hmm. Quickness and wits nine, charm six. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. And so then, Rod. So I picked wealth and education. Oh, really? Uh huh. Yeah, that puts me at a uh, wits eight, quickness seven, and brawn nine. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a lot of high rollers. Now, of course, everybody would make two characters. Right. As usual, but. Um, but with that in mind, now we go straight to another roll with the three dice. We're okay. done with that roll, and now we're going to do another roll. Here, you're looking at the character's social power and their reputation. And you do this by adding the black die to wits, gives you power, and okay. the white die to wits gives you reputation. So it's just like the feature and demeanor in Circle of Hands, the same system. But it's very different. As you can see, this is about your impact on the society around you. Okay. So therefore you are, it's like being a judge or something like that. You're actually able to to apply coercive power in the name of some larger societal body. Um, by implication, your personal 
ties and interactions and force of personality on its own for you aren't really getting you much in your life. It's not a big part of who you are as far as everyone else is concerned. Um, and so, uh, in the generous, yes. Do you see what I mean by saying generous, but a little bit, uh, what does it say? A little bit dominating? Is that what it says? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the kind of generosity, which means that you, you, you know, people know you did them a favor. Um, so, uh, so what's your red die? And my red die is a four. Which I believe makes you a background of soldier. Is that right? Oh, these are in order of... Right, yeah, result. sorry. They're numbered in order. It's, that's what notes gets you. Yep, yeah. four. Okay, oh. so that's your family background, and you have a high wit, so you can pick another background if you've moved on from your soldierly upbringing. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh. One more per four with. Yeah, I'm still not sure if I like that or not. Maybe I'll just let everybody move on one and just have that be fixed. Um, well, I feel like it works well for my guy, but right. Um, and besides, I think it's confusing to have more than two. Fair. Enough. 